Hey, good morning. Welcome back to our Sunday suit class. We get a new quarter. And our lesson today is talking about the ordination of Aaron and his sons. We are going to be in Leviticus 8 chapter, verses 1 through 13. And we have three outlines. Uh, called by the Lord, prepared by the Lord, and ordained by the Lord. All right. Let's uh, go right into prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, thank you, thank you. Father God, we thank you for new mercies that you are showing every day by allowing us to wake up this morning with a right mind stand on thee. We ask you right now that you touch our minds and hearts and that we open it up that we may receive this lesson and, and learn from what you need from us to learn and to pass it on to others. We thank you for our class. Thank you for those that might listen later on. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Okay. So we're going to go right into this lesson. And um, it's interesting outlines here. Called by the Lord, prepared by the Lord, and ordained by the Lord. Um, great stuff here. Let's get right into it. Um, we read verses 1 through, one through 9. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take Aaron and his sons with him, and the garments, and the anointing oil, and the bullock for the sin offering, and two rams, and the basket of unleavened bread. And gather thou all the congregations together into the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Moses did as the Lord commanded, and he assembled was gathered the assembly was gathered together unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Moses said unto the congregation, This is the thing which the Lord commanded to be done. And Moses brought Aaron and his sons and washed them with water. And he put upon him the coat and girded him with a girdle and clothed him with a robe and put the ephraim upon him and girded him with the, with the curious girdle of the Ephraim, and bind it unto him thereof. And he put the breastplate upon him, and also put the breastplate of Urim and the Thermal. And he put the mitre upon his head, and also upon the mitre even upon his forehead. And he did put, did he put the golden plate, the holy crown, as the Lord commanded Moses. So, first off, we, we want to look at this lesson and we see that God, called by God, um, that's a serious statement there when people say that, hey, I've been called. Um, we have to make sure that we, we really been called. <laughs> uh, but, because some days, as they say, some went, some was sent. Uh, but, these these men have been called and what we see in here is Moses is being obedient to the Lord everything he, he he's doing he, he's keeps saying you know as the Lord commanded God is the God of order and we are seeing this this ritual the Jewish rituals and, and we're seeing how they do their ceremonies and it has to be to the T in decency and order. See, anything we do in the name of the Lord, it has to be in decency and order. It has to be a reason why we do it. We just can't be just doing anything just to be doing. We have to have a reason why we're doing things. And hopefully it's been because of what God has instructed us to do. Uh, these men, Moses was doing, he was cleaning them. Because although they've been called, they were very human and they're sinful. And still, you know, they still commit sins. So we have to clean them up and uh, and, and get them ready for this calling that God has, has instructed them to do. So if we, we see that even you've been called, it doesn't exempt you from sin. Matter of fact, we have to pray every day to make sure we, we haven't, you know, be on the straight pair, straight narrow path. Um, they say that. The quickest way between two points is a straight line. 
God asks us to walk straightward, go straight, go forward, and 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 basically head towards that mark that Paul talks about. Instead of going left, you know, you know, we're going straight. So, so it's important to realize that this is what it's all about of, of cleaning them up and getting them ready for the task of, of being the, these priests that God had called them to be. Let's read on and uh, continue to talk about the ordained, being ordained by the Lord. And Moses took anointing oil and anointed the tabernacle and all that was therein and sanctified them. And he sprinkled thereof upon the altar seven times and anointed the altar of all his vessels, both the, the lever and his foot, to sanctify them. And he poured of the anointing oil upon Aaron's head and anointed him and sanctified him. And Moses brought Aaron's sons and put coats upon them and girded them with the girdles and the bonnets and put the bonnets upon them as the Lord commanded Moses. As the Lord commanded them. Anything we do, we have to do it doing it, knowing that the Holy Spirit is leading and guiding us and, and, and telling us what we should do. Uh, it was important that Moses did exactly what God had commanded. God wanted this, this ceremony, if you will, in front of the congregation so they know that these men were called. And because they were called, they weren't better than the congregation. They were just set apart from the congregation because they had a higher task, a higher office. So they have to be respected as such. God wanted them to respect the position. See, even if you don't like individuals in church, if they hold a position, you at least have to respect the titles. Uh, you have to give them their due because we trust and believe that if they've been voted into position and, you know, the congregation has voted them in, they respect them and allow them to do their job. Doesn't mean they always right. Sometimes you have to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk out of love and, and say, hey, I think you, you might be, because if we're human, we, we might go wrong. Talk talk with them and, 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 and out of love and show them, you know, this is why I think you went wrong today. You know, uh, you might want to tweak this a little bit. That's okay. But ultimately, respect the position. That's what God wanted them to do. And we have to understand something. The reason why this whole big picture of this lesson, of this whole ceremony of them being clean, God is holy. And and this is an important job of being priests. See, we need a representative to go towards God. We can't come filthy and unclean. So they would use a priest back then to represent and go to God for us with the prayers and things of that nature. But now we we serve a risen Savior, Jesus Christ, that had died for us. He had died and rose up on the third day with all power in his hands. And now he intercedes for us and represents us as a as a, a great lawyer for the judge and and, and, he, and, he, and he, he represents us and because of his grace and his blood that covers us we are able to 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 pray go to the lord talk to him any any time any time but we have to have a clean heart in doing it See, what we have to do now, class, is we need to go back to the basics. I see we, we have gotten away with a lot of things and we, we've more, I see more churches going direction of what the world is doing. We got to go back to the basics. We got to go back to striving and being consistent on being holy as much as we can. We're not perfect, but we should be striving for perfection to be perfect. We'll never be perfect until we leave, to leave this earth, okay? But we should at least be consistent on what we're doing. We can't be unstable. Double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. We have to stay focused on what we're supposed to be doing at 
all times. You're not going to always get it right. No one's perfect. You know, we all have come short. You know, when it comes down to, for the glory of God. But it's important to at least be putting that effort in there. And going back to the basics. What, what is the basics? The basis is, let's go back into praying. Praying often, daily. Let's get back into our daily breads that we read. We used to read. Let's go back and give it, start our Sunday school lessons. Let's go back and, and, and listen to Bible study. Let's go back into, you know, studying God's word so we may show ourselves approved. Fast from time to time. Those things are important, you know, to to draw near and closer to God. Let's go back to the basics. So it was a movie. Let's be closing out again. <laughs> that um, I used to watch um, growing up in the 80s. It was uh, Rocky IV. It's probably my favorite Rocky um, there was. And, and Rocky was going against this Russian. And the Russian, you know, he had all this technology for his workouts. You know, they was injecting him with different, I guess, I don't know, steroids or whatever. And, you know, he was running on machines. And, and you know, that was, it. that was their thing. And he was very strong and powerful. You know, great. You know, Rocky had to go up to Russia, and they didn't provide him with anything. He was providing him with a cabin, no hotel or anything. He had to do the basic things. His trainer said, let's get back to the basics. Let's run through the snow, you know, build our strength that way, not doing the machines. You know, they had to use logs and stuff for working out. Going back to the basics. So when he did have the, the actual boxing match, Rocky, his endurance lasted longer than the Russian. He was able to endure because he went to and did the basics of the workouts. We need to start working out spiritually and going back to the basics of studying. You know, singing and, and having the gospel songs is great and all that, you know, the, especially contemporary songs, that's wonderful. But does it really fill the soul? What fills the soul is the good old gospel, studying, praying, some of the old hymns, getting back to the basics and where we first receive Christ. Take me back. Take me back, oh Lord. <laughs> and, and, and that's what it comes for. And, I, and that's when you start enduring until the end. That's when you're able to finish the race. That's when you don't give up. Class, let's go back to the basics. Let's go back to, you know, what it really means to truly be a, a Christian, Christ-like and holy. So let's read this last part. It was interesting. I normally don't read word for word. It was in a lesson. I try to um, speak, you know, what comes to my mind, what the Lord tells me. But sometimes it's, it's some interesting stuff in here. And it basically closes out and says, The visual aids summarize the basic principle. We can draw from the lesson text. Following our own standards towards our own efforts leads to sinful self-righteousness. Following the standards set forth in God's word humbles us and leads us leads to true holiness in Christ's likeness. Okay? Let's not be self-righteous, you know. Um, let's, let's do what the Lord has commanded us to do. And we all in this together. Like I said, we, we, no one's perfect. But let's do it together. Let's come together and let's, and let's pray for one another. That we stay focused and continue to do what God has commanded us to do. All right, class. Um, great lesson. Um, important. Great stuff. Let's get back to the, to the basics. Okay. Um, time is, is, is winding up. We're going to um, stay in Levit Leviticus next week as well. Um, Deaconess Hill will provide us with a lesson as she continues to do a marvelous, marvelous job of teaching. All right. Enjoy Deaconess Hill. Let's close out with a prayer and, um, and bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we, we love you. We trust you with all of our heart and soul. We leaning and depending upon you. Father, I learned how to lean on you. I tried you for myself. 
I've learned that you will be there in a time of sorrow, through trials and tribulations. You would never leave us nor forsake us. You would be right there standing near us. So Father, there's no need to be dismayed. We know that you sit high and you look low. You're sitting on the throne and watching over you all. Father, then we're going to say thank you. Thank you for dying and sending your son down here to die on the cross and shedding his blood that we might have the right to the tree of life. And you got up on the third day with all power in your hands, the power to forgive, to love, to give us peace. Jesus, we ask you right now to watch over our class. So many things are going so wrong in our communities around the world. And this virus, the numbers are going up. Keep us safe. Keep your loving arms around us and protect us. Bless our pastor. Bless his family. Bless our church. Bless our class. And Father, please bless every church opening the name's sake. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Class, wear your mask, please. Let's get back to practicing social distancing as much as possible. I know we still have a life to live. We got to go to work. We got to do things. Um, but I'm praying for you that you know the Lord keeps you safe. I love you. Until next time, enjoy your Sunday.